My name is Charlie Evans, and I'm a software developer for the Call for Code team at IBM. And today, I want to talk briefly about IBM Cloud Object Storage. So what is IBM Cloud Object Storage? It's a highly available, durable, and secure platform for storing unstructured data. This unstructured data can be anything from PDFs to media files to database backups, um, anything that is a file, if you will. Um, collectively, we refer to these as objects, hence the name object storage. And you store all of these in something called a bucket. So I want to show you how you can make use of this in IBM Cloud. So when you log into your IBM Cloud interface, um, if you don't already have an instance of this, you can go to the catalog and you can search for object storage. And this first block right here will be what you want. And when you click on that, it'll bring you to this page and you have a couple of options on plans. Uh, there is a light plan available here and you can see here that you get one service instance of it and you get a few you know, limitations, uh, but it is free. And then of course there is a, a standard pricing plan available as well. After you create this, you will be taken to the page which you can see here. And when you arrive here, this is the view that you get. Um, the very first thing will be um, your, uh, your buckets, if you have any. Um, this is where you can create buckets. And then there are some other options here on the left-hand side about uh, you know, the various endpoints that are available in case you decide to use uh, the REST API. Um, your usage details um, as of you know, a particular moment in time, the place where you can create service credentials. So if you would rather um, have a set of credentials to access uh, via SDKs or, or APIs, um, you can do that here instead of using your user account. Um, and then you can see information about the plan that you're on here and then, you know, what other plan options are available to you. Now, the primary way of storing your, uh, your objects are in buckets. So, um, we need to create a bucket, right? So we can create a bucket here. When you click that, you get a few options here. You can either just um, run this first box, which says customize your bucket, which is really just you are handling, uh, inputting everything and selecting exactly what you're looking for. Or you can use one of these uh, templates here as well. Now, I'm just going to use customize your bucket for now. So when you get here, you can see there's few options that you can select and a few things you need to enter. The very first thing is a bucket name. So the bucket name um, can be anything as long as it fits within these naming rules. And it is important to note that um, the bucket name has to be unique across all of IBM Cloud Object Storage. This is because it creates a unique URL to whatever your bucket name is and you can't have URL collisions. So you can enter some sort of bucket name here. So for example, you know, if I put Charlie test bucket here, right? And then if that's available, it will let me know that it's available. Also, it will tell you, you know, as you're entering data, if you don't have enough information or if you break or breaking one of the rules. So the next thing you can pick is your resiliency. Um, this basically um, um, allows you to figure out how um, accessible your data objects need to be. So by default, it selects regional, which just means that um, your data is available in a particular region inside of IBM Cloud. You can use uh, cross region, which means that um, you will pick a geographical area such as the United States, and your data is automatically replicated to all of the regions in the United States. You can see that here in the location dropdown that there are three geographical locations. And then uh, the other option is single site, which just means that um, your data is accessible in a particular data center. Um, this might be good if you need to isolate that data like very heavily, um, but you do lose um, some resiliency because it's only accessible in that one data center and not anywhere else. So we'll stick with regional for now. 
Um, and then obviously you want to make sure you pick the region that's closest to you uh, that makes sense. So for me, that would be US South. So the next thing here is you're going to pick our storage class. Now what the storage class is, is it's a way of figuring out how often you might need to access this information. So if it's data that you're going to be getting at all the time, let's say it's like assets for a web application, then you might need something that's a little more accessible, such as standard or even the smart tier. Um, if it's data that's not going to be accessed a whole lot, um, you know, and is more for archival storage, you can use, um, you know, one of these vault or cold vault options here. Uh, we're going to stick with smart tier because smart tier uh, will figure out your access patterns and will automatically allocate for that. There are some other options you can enable here. Um, the first is object versioning. So if you want to have, um, you, if you want to keep like a revision history of the objects that you are uploading into your buckets, you can do that by enabling this here. Otherwise, the, you know, if you, if you input the same file with the same name, it will just overwrite it. We're going to keep it disabled for now. And then there are some advanced configurations you can do, such as uh, retention policies and expirations of the files and, and that sort of thing. You can also do static website hosting here, and you can configure that from here. Uh, and then there are a few service integrations. So for example, if you need encryption uh, on your objects, you can enable that here. Um, and then you can you know, add some monitoring. Once, you're, once you've configured all this, you can click Create Bucket, and it will create your bucket for you. So we'll go. I already have a bucket, so we're going to go back to my bucket here. And we can look at the bucket. Now, when you enter into the bucket view here, you can see that there's a few tabs at the top. Uh, the first one will show all the objects that you have in your bucket. Um, there is a configuration tab, which is um, a little bit more detailed from the, the stuff we just looked at. So you can see here that it's got more information about the bucket itself, you know, what its storage class is, how many objects are in it, um, what its resiliency is set as. Um, it, there are information here about the API endpoints that you would connect to to access this bucket. This will be really useful, um, you know, if you're if you're developing. Um, and again, you know, the advanced configuration stuff, the object versioning, all of that is in here, and you can change those values here. And then the last thing is this permissions tab where you can uh, set access policies on the objects in this bucket. So for example, um, buckets are private by default, so you have to have some sort of authentication measure in order to get into the bucket. Uh, but if you wanted, uh, objects to be accessible publicly, you could come in here and you can enable public access by doing that. Um, it will give you a warning by letting you know that this is, makes it accessible to anybody. Um, but if you're okay with that, you can set you know, the, the role here and then you can create a policy. Um, the same goes for um, even accessing it with like users or service credentials. You can come in here and you can assign roles to users or service credentials, or even access groups if you have those set up. And you know that's it for the quick the the quick detail. Now, um, as far as uploading, you know, we can upload right here in the interface, um, which makes it super easy, right? We can just click the upload, and then um, we can pick a file. Or our, our other option is we can just drag and drop. So we're just going to drag and drop. So I have this cool photo here that I might want to use as like a background for a website or something like that. So I want to upload this to my bucket. So all I'm going to simply do is drag and drop it and it's done. So it says upload success and um, you can see here that um, it's uploaded. It says one object, here's the date, etc. And then you, there's some actions we can perform here. but. Once we come back to the object view, you can see that you know we have our, our item here and there's some things we can do to it. So we can you know, look at more details about it. Um, we can get a, a, a direct uh, object SQL URL to download this. Um, we can just download it here by downloading it. Um, 
we can add tags to it. So, you know, this might be a way to categorize, you know, information that you're, you're placing in here. So for example, I might wanna say, you know, that this is like a, you know, a type of background, right? And I can save that. And then now when I look at the object details, it says that there's a tag and I can go view it. And then under the lifecycle tab here, it just shows you if there are any rules and policies that have been configured uh, that this object is adhering to. Now, there's a lot more that you can do with um, cloud object storage, um, including um, you know, accessing it via the REST APIs. Uh, there are library SDKs that you can use for Java, Go, PHP, etc. And to find out more about this, you can go to uh, the docs, the IBM Cloud docs and search for object storage. And you'll, you'll come to this page here, which has everything that you need in order to get started with object storage, including some tutorials, a bunch of how to's, um, you know, the API reference itself, the different um, libraries and how to use them and how to get started with those. So that has been a quick overview of cloud object storage. If you have any questions, please reach out to me on Slack and I'd be happy to help you. Thank you and have a great day.